Much as uh, Buddy was accepted by his family and friends, there were a few drawbacks to being a, a human in a, an elf's world. Hey, Ming Ming. Um, I'm going to be a little bit short on today's quota. It's all right, buddy. Just how many etches catches did you get finished? Come on, buddy, how many? I made, uh, 85. You, 915 off the pace. Why don't you just say it? I'm the worst toy maker in the world. I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins. <gasps> no, buddy, you're not a cotton-headed ninny muggins. We all just have different talents. That's all. Seems like everyone else has the same talents except for me. You, you have, you have lots of talents. Uh, special talents, in fact, like. Um, uh, special talents? Hey, you changed the batteries in the smoke detector? Mm -hmm. Sure did. Yes. Triple A's. In six months, you'll have to check them again. Won't mm -hmm. yeah, And you're the only baritone in the elf choir. <laughs> you bring us down a whole octave. In a good way. <laughs> See, buddy? You're not a cotton-headed mini muggins. You're just... special. Oh, dear. That's what you want to hear. You're just special. I want to wanna thank you so much for inviting my wife and uh, my kids here. It is an honor to be here. Uh, we pastor a church in Cranbrook, B.C., and um, have really been impacted by this church as well. The church in Cranbrook wouldn't literally exist today if it weren't for some people inside of this church. Um, so thank you. Uh, I, we owe you a, a great debt, but... Um, how, how many, how many of you, uh, sometimes like Buddy, um, uh, have let have let some problems maybe reflect on you just a little bit? Where the things that come at you, the issues, the problems, you you, you tend to internalize as a result of those things. You put your worth based on the problems around you. Have any have you ever struggled with that? Maybe it, it looks a little bit like like a. Uh, a problem will come at you, and then as a result of the problem, you begin to think on the problem. Then as a result of thinking on that negative problem, you begin to think negative things, and then those negative things begin to make you think negative things about yourself. And then as you think negative things about yourself, you get like a negative self-worth just a little bit, and then all of a sudden you are calling yourselves names as a result of the problems that you come up against. Does anybody else ever run into, it, it, it is this kind of thing here where, where, where there is a, a, uh, a negative self-thinking which leads to a negative self-talk which leads to a negative self-worth. Um, I, uh, I, had a, I had a lousy week. <laughs> In fact, I had a lousy couple of weeks. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys have ever been like that before. Um, but I, I was supposed to get this, we do up an advent calendar every year for, for our group of people. It's kind of a reverse advent calendar where rather than getting a gift, uh, you actually get a thing that you should do. Uh, it's kind of a reverse advent calendar. Um, anyways, I was supposed to get it to the printers before it, it uh, what's the date today? December it's December 2nd. It's not always good to hand out an advent calendar on December 2nd. But I didn't get it to the printers on time, and so back home, all of our people are receiving their advent calendars today, and they got to do two days' worth today. <sighs> then I ordered the wrong thermostat. In fact, I ordered five wrong thermostats for the church uh, building. Not very good. Uh, Jody and I, this week before our group, were like arguing and, and fighting over stupid little stuff. How, how many of you guys are involved in a group? How many of some kind? Okay. How many, how many of you guys before group is the time when you usually fight the most with your spouse? Just me. All right. Yeah. So that, that helps a lot. Make me feel a lot better about myself. Um, 
And, and so then I was speaking in, in Uganda uh, and, and to, to, to this huge church in Uganda, and I was feeling a little bit nervous about it, and we were doing it over Skype. Who uses Skype anymore? They do in Uganda. But there were all sorts of problems. There were all sorts of technical difficulties, and I would talk, and then I'd say something super funny, and they wouldn't laugh. And so I was like feeling like down on myself, and then five seconds later, when I'm in the middle of continuing on with my story, they'd laugh, and that'd throw me off, and I was confused and frustrated, and I was like, oh, man, God doesn't even, obviously doesn't even want me speaking to these people. I'm, uh, man, and I'm looking down on myself, and I'm like, man, I'm just a, I'm a lousy husband for arguing with my wife. I'm a lousy leader for, for not uh, leading the church that I sh- the way that I should be. God probably didn't even want me speaking in Uganda. That's why there were these problems, these technical issues, because I'm a, I'm a lousy leader. I'm a lousy parent. I'm a lousy father. Why, am I, I, why don't they get somebody else who has more faith, is more gifted, is more talented than me to do these things? Because I am a cotton-headed ninny muggin. Because I, I let the problems that come at me speak into my identity rather than letting God speak into my identity. You know, uh, 2,000 years ago, Jesus arrived and he changed things. He gave us the opportunity to connect with God, he gave us the opportunity to have a relationship with God where God speaks into our identity. He came to let us know that we are children, beloved children, and that the problems that come at us no longer have the ability to speak into our life. I want to talk a little bit more about problems this morning. Uh, Long before psychology came around, uh, God said that our thoughts absolutely are important. That if we can... Uh, make sure that our thinking is what it is that it's supposed to be, that we'll be connecting with God the way that we're supposed to be. Um, see, because you are constantly talking to yourself all of the time. I don't know how many of you realize that, but you can actually uh, listen to and deal with about 150 to 200 words a minute. And so when I am speaking slowly up here, that's why it is that you can also be thinking to yourself more words than you're actually hearing and be planning your lunch afterwards while I'm talking. Yeah? Be thinking about that thing that you got to do afterwards. Be thinking about that issue that you have. Be thinking about all sorts of other things other than what it is that I am saying. And the problem is when, when our thought life, uh, that, that a lot of us, we are spending too much time with our thought life focusing on our problems, focusing on our adversities, focusing on our failures. And if you're typical to the human race, then you are probably your own worst critic. How many of you would agree with that? You are your own worst critic. Okay, some of you. That's why it is that we can walk into a Christmas party, maybe the one that you guys are having coming up here, and you'll walk in there and you'll have a smile on your face, but really you're going, well, I was late, I'm such a doofus, nobody's probably going to talk to me, Uh, I don't even like what I'm wearing, this thing makes me look fat. Oh, and you have all of these things going on inside of your thought life when what's going on in the exterior doesn't match up with it. And I think some of us can get sucked into this stinking thinking far too often. It's too much uh, stinky thinky. You got to watch it because it will roll in your head in the background as you go through life and affect your identity, but it shouldn't. I want to talk a little bit about more that, more about that this morning. Um, Because the problem is, if we get sucked into that thinking, we begin, the temptation is to call out God on it. If you are like, oh, I'm, I'm lousy at this, and I'm terrible at that, and I'm not very good at this, and I'm, oh, look at how di- I did this, and I failed in that again, aren't you really saying, God, you suck at making people? If you are talking poorly about yourself, and God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you are special, that I have a plan for you, that you are awesome, that I sent my son to die for you. And if you are talking badly about yourself, then aren't you really talking badly about the creator? So be careful 
with your thought life. Because the temptation to think that way will be normal. It, it will be something that will regularly tempt you. Uh, unless you are one of those people, and, and, and maybe you've met those people before, those people who are like, oh, I haven't been tempted for about 20 years now with anything. I have a, a, a theological term for those people. It's what it is that you get when you cross an abalone with a crocodile. That is a croc baloney I am sorry. Everybody is tempted. It is something that will be coming your way regularly. Get used to it. Uh, it is normal. And if you aren't being tempted, then you need to ask yourself if you're actually in this Christianity thing. Because trials will come your way. Tribulation will come your way. Issues will come your way. It's not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin to give in to the temptation. So you will be tempted. Now, today I want to talk about how James, Jesus' brother, actually dealt with this. Now, for those of you who know James, uh, James was the brother of Jesus. He was the first son of Joseph, the second of Mary, uh, Jesus' half-brother, uh, who didn't actually believe in Jesus until he did what it is that he said he would do. Uh, he didn't believe in Jesus. He wasn't a follower of Jesus during his time on earth. But whenever somebody says, hey, I am going to die, and then I'm going to come back to life, at that point, once they come back to life, you pretty much have to agree with whatever it is that they say, right? And so poor James had to eat some major crow as his brother came back to life and then stayed with him for another 40 days uh, before he, he went up to heaven. And, and James afterward became... Uh, so changed as a result of what it is that he saw in Jesus that he became a leader inside of the church. And he, he wrote the, what, what, in what it is that we call the Bible today, the book of James, which is, are letters to the people in Jerusalem that had been scattered abroad as a result of the per persecution that was going on there. Not unlike the persecution that you're seeing in India right now, where they were just absolutely... Uh, uh, hunted down and beaten and killed for their faith. And so people ran. And James, the, the half-brother of Jesus, is trying to encourage people. And so he writes them a letter. <laughs> he has a funny way of encouraging people. He, he says, hi, this is James. And then he says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. How would you like to get a greeting like that, eh? It's like, hi, it's James. Be happy because things are going awful for you. What? He says, yeah. And then the people who received this letter must have been like, um, you don't know my situation, obviously. Um, uh, we're hiding in a cave right now uh, because people are trying to kill us. And he's like, no. The important thing here is because you know. He says, consider pure joy Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know, and this could be true for all of us too, because you know that testing of your faith develops perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. He's saying that your attitude is determined by your understanding. Rejoicing is not just positive thinking. It's actually understanding some of the facts that we can know about problems. And I want to talk about some of them this morning. If you've got problems... And if you don't, check your pulse. Um, but if you've got problems here this morning, then here are some facts that are probably true about your problems. First of all, they are inevitable. They are coming. It, they're they're, they're, they're going to happen. It doesn't say if you encounter problems, consider it joy. It says whenever. Count on it. You're going to have problems. Jesus said in the world, you can guarantee it. You will have tribulation. Problems are coming your way. They're not an elective. They're a required course. Nobody is immune. Uh, but I, I was so naive in my early walk with Jesus that I used to pray for problems. Because I would read what it is that was going on in the Bible. And, and so I would go, God, man, just send the persecution. Father, send the problems. Send the difficulties. Um, because I know that it will, it will be so good for me, Father. And I, I, don't, I don't pray for that anymore. Um, <laughs> um, let's keep going. Problems are also unpredictable. He says that you can't actually plan for problems. Whenever you face 
problems. This word face is a Greek word, peripipto. It literally means something that you fall into unexpectedly. In fact, this is the same word that, that was used in, in the story of the Good Samaritan where the man, man fell among some thieves, that it's something that you don't expect. Problems are going to come their way. You can't plan for them, which is probably really good. Because if we could plan for them, we would plan our way around them or out of them because we don't like problems. But um, problems are actually really purposeful. Uh, and so if you let them, God will send some problems, your, uh, allow the problems to come your way. He doesn't cause them, but he will allow the problems to come your way in order to use them because he has a purpose for you. And so here, here are some of the, 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 the purposes of a problem. First of all, problems, they purify my faith. That pain can be productive. That pressure produces. That it has value in our lives. What is the value? Well, they purify my faith. They work to make me stronger. James uses the word testing here, as in testing gold and silver, where, where you, you would heat up gold and silver until they became very, very hot, and then the impurities would kind of bubble to the surface, the dross. You'd be able to get rid of that. Maybe God is allowing some problems inside of your life because you've got some impurities still that need to get dealt with. That Maybe there are some issues. Maybe there are some things. See, the thing is, Christians are a lot like tea bags. You don't know what's inside of them until they're in hot water. And so when you are in hot water, if you don't like what it is that you see bubbling out of you, then maybe there's a little bit of work that you still need to do. Maybe there's some dross. Maybe there's some impurities that you've got to deal with. If you're flying off the handle and getting angry when every little issue comes your way, what is the source of that? What is the lie that you're still believing? Where have you not let the truth of Jesus infill that area? See, they will, they will, problems will purify you. And not only that, problems will also fortify you. They'll fortify your patience. James tells his believer friends uh, with problems, he says that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. That he, he is talking about staying power here. Not passive patience, but absolute holding on for every single possibly, possible way that you can. And if you guys let problems develop perseverance man it will be so good for you uh, there, there are so many opportunities in, in jody in my life where we've allowed our problems to develop perseverance in us uh, my wife jody uh, about eight years ago her jaw began to grow on one side again that the condyle turned on again and so her jaw just began to twist is that awkward is jody is hi how are you hi jody and I'm not Jody, I'm Frank, but okay. Um, the doctors said it's literally, a, this is a one in a million thing. Uh, we don't know what it is that the cause of this is. And we were freaking out because there weren't a lot of surgeries that could actually do anything for her. And it was just going to continue to grow and grow and grow until it snapped her jaw right off. And the doctors were like, okay, well, there's this one doctor in Dallas, um, but the Canadian government doesn't ever pay for anybody to go down there. So it's going to cost you about $75,000. And we were freaking out. Um, this was a major problem. Now, the good news is, fast forward, um, as we continued to journey, as we continued to pray, as we got other people to pray, that God did this really cool thing where he had the government of Canada change their mind. That happens all the time. Um, <laughs> and say, you know what, for this one time, we are going to send you down there and we're going to pay for everything and you're going to be able to get this prosthetic jaw put in. So my wife is like the $75,000 woman. Uh, uh, I think she's worth more than that, but that's what they call her. Um, when, when I was diagnosed four years ago with stage four lymphoma, I was a little nervous about it. This was a problem. Nobody wants to hear stage four anything. And, and when we were in it, we were like, oh man, do we let this problem uh, be something that takes us out of, out, of, uh, out of things? Or do we actually let what it is that this problem is make us become who it is that God is calling us to become. And I got a miracle, which is great, and if you want to hear that story, come and talk to me about it. Um, but if we look at these problems, 
not as something that is supposed to speak into our identity, but it's supposed to be something that is supposed to actually dig into our character, where we recognize that God is more interested in our character than he is in our comfort, that he's more interested in us becoming like his son Jesus than he is in us staying ourselves, that if we let him do what it is that he wants to do because his primary purpose in your life, his primary thing that he wants you to understand is that you are called to be like his son. And if you let them, these problems will actually lead you towards that. That, that, that God uses problems in our lives to teach us how to handle pressure, how to never give up, how to persevere through everything. Because problems will align me with Jesus. They'll help me mature, they'll help me grow. It's, he said, let perseverance finish its, finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. How many of you want to be mature and complete? How many of you don't want to raise your hand because the guy just said something and you just... How many of you would like to be mature and complete? Oh, okay, yeah, I can still see you. See, that is God's long-range goal for you. And so many Christians that I know have absolutely no idea of that. They don't understand that that's God's agenda in your life. That he wants to see you be mature. And so let the problems that come your way push you towards that. Encourage you back to God. Because Jesus always took the problems that came his way. And he let, he gave them back to God in prayer. See, he let his problems be a bridge to a deeper relationship with his father. And that's what it is that problems should be for you. That problems are a bridge to a deeper relationship with God, if you let them. It, and, and this is so true. I mean, many of us, we begin our relationship with God, and we get a bit of a heading. We, we get a bit of, of, a, of, a, of a direction. We think, okay, absolutely, I, I understand this, that, that okay, I, I, need to be, I need to be focused on something, all right? Um, l- let's just say that... I get a direction, and, and, and God says, okay, you are called to be irresistible. I'm going to do something inside of you that is going to change you. Irres- and you're going to become irresistible. You're going to become unstoppable for the kingdom. And, and you, as a result of that, are going to see so much life change. Sound familiar? There it is. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Irresistible, unstoppable, life-changing. So I begin to go. And I'm like, okay, excuse me, pardon me. Irresistible, unstoppable, life-changing. Got the direction. I'm going. Irresistible, unstoppable, life-changing. And then you go, oh, look. I've run into a problem. You know, maybe, maybe that, that course that I got from God was wrong. Because look what I've run up against here. <sighs> maybe I didn't even hear from God at the beginning. Maybe, maybe I'm not even supposed to be going that way. Maybe I'm just supposed to... But then if you let him, and you go, God, did I miss you? What is it that I'm called to do? All right. Irresistible unstoppable, life-changing. So I get going again. I get excited. And then the problems, they tend to move out of the way almost sometimes. And you just keep going, and you'll get, excuse me, you'll get people helping you along the way as you keep moving forward. Oh, dear. If you let them, as you are journeying, the problems that come your way will be a bridge. See, see, God is not interested in the destination. He's interested in the journey. And as I go through all of these hurdles, as I go through the problems that come my way, I'm supposed to allow the Holy Spirit into my life in a way where he changes me, 
He makes me better. He makes me stronger. He helps me persevere. He helps me become more like his son, Jesus. But if you guys are, whenever you face a problem, if you're stopping and saying, I guess I didn't hear from God. I just must be a lousy human being. I just must suck. I mean, God's got to have a, make a few mistakes, doesn't he? God doesn't make junk, you guys. We are all imperfect people, and we are all going to face problems. And each of those problems are supposed to be a part of you working your way back to God. They're supposed to be a part of the, the refining process that God wants to do inside of you. So let him do his work. Because here's the thing. If you are saying, you know what? I'm called to be irresistible. I'm called to be unstoppable. I'm called to uh, see not only life change in me, but life change in the people around me. What is Satan going to do? If you're going to be irresistible, he will resist you. If you are called to be unstoppable, he will try to stop you. Satan wants to pee in your cornflakes. That is his goal. He wants to be, make you become so frustrated, so angry, so discouraged that you will stop journeying towards what it is that God is calling you to be. Don't let him. James continues on uh, a little while later, and, and, and he says, God opposes the, opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Folks, problems that may come your way may be from the devil. But if you focus on God, it will be a bridge to a deeper relationship with Jesus. It will be a bridge to a better version of yourself. It will be a bridge toward that will help you towards your calling, towards what it is that God has created you to do, if you let them. So you can consider problems joy. Because if you let them, they'll do something impactful in your life. Please, this church cannot stop being irresistible. This church cannot stop the call that God has on its life. And there are going to be problems. There are going to be issues. There are going to be interrelational issues because you're imperfect and whenever you who are imperfect connects with somebody else who is imperfect, imperfectness results. And there will be relational struggles. There will be hardships. You guys have a call, a mandate from God. Don't let problems get in the way of that. When you see those problems, go to God with them. Go to the other people with them, and then get back on track. Get back towards your course. This is something that God has called you to. Own it. Live it. Persevere. Don't get off course. Humbly give your problems to God. Because they will be a deeper a bridge towards a deeper relationship with him. You know, I, I've tried to let some of the problems that Jody and I have, have faced over the years um, lead me back to God rather than lead me away from God, which is what it is that Satan would have for them. And, and instead, I chose to lean into him more, to run to him more, to, to, to seek him more. And I will ignore that stinking thinking that wants to enter into my brain where it is the, I, I see the problems as, as issues of myself, that I must be broken, I must be dysfunctional, and instead go, oh no, these problems, God is allowing them into my life in order to deal with some things, in, in order to strengthen my relationship with him. See, because God sees me as a beloved child, that he loves me, that God is not only with me, that Emmanuel... Jesus with us is not just with us, but he is for us. And if he has allowed, allowed a problem into your life, then ask what it is that he wants to use it for. Matthew 1.23, Behold, the virgin shall 
conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. When we encounter problems, Emmanuel. When we encounter issues, Emmanuel. When something terrible happens in our life, Emmanuel. Not, I'm just a terrible human being. I must, my past must be catching up with me. Oh, all of the issues that are, I, I, I'm reaping what I've sown. No. Emmanuel. God is with you in the trial. God is with you in the tribulation. He's for you. Own it. Look at those problems as a gift. I want to invite up uh, Shai maybe to play a, a little bit of music here. And in, in a bit, I'm going to invite up some others. Um, some of you, as I was praying, uh, may just need a, a bit of a course correction. Um, that maybe you've begun to see some problems in your life, and those problems maybe are a gift. Um, but have you begun to ask, how do I help make those problems a course correction? Maybe some of you need a, a course correction in regards to your thinking. Maybe some of you need a, a course correction in regards to your attitude. Maybe there are some behaviors that need to change just a little bit. What are the impurities that boil up into your life when there are problems? Maybe some of you need to deal with that anger issue. Maybe some of you need to deal with that insecurity issue. Maybe some of you need to deal with that self-sufficiency, I got this attitude. And some of you need to change your thinking here this morning. See, changing your thinking is, is just that term that we don't really like to use inside of the church that is so loaded, that, that idea of repenting. Repenting is just changing your thinking and then changing your direction. Which is what it is that if we're smart, we'll let problems do. Change our thinking and change our direction. Write our direction again. And maybe if you're human, you've probably got some problems in your life here right now, today. And maybe those problems are meant to refine you, are meant to grow you. Maybe those problems are called, are, are allowed into our life to help us repent from something that we're believing. See, it takes a choice to ask God into our life when we can't do anything about our situation. It takes a choice to say, God, I want you. I want your purposes, no matter what the issues are, no matter what the difficulties are. I believe that we celebrate Christmas because you sent your son, who didn't just stay a little baby in a manger, but grew up to live a perfect life and then chose to lay down his life for our stupid choices, for our sins, because he's interested in relating to us. He's interested in loving us. He's interested in being with us because he's for us.